Uh, another common thing is what we just talked about in the previous video, namely how many uh, points are close to a specific um, address, or sorry, a specific station. Um, this concept of finding how many are within a specific distance is very common and uh, the standard way of doing this would be to you create a buffer. So the standard tool that we work with is the buffer tool in the vector world. So what it does is that it creates this shape polygon. If it's a point, it will create a round one. If it's an arc, a linear, it will create these oval things. So it creates polygons that have a specific distance to our object. And there's two uh, there's an important little um, property to set, namely whether to dissolve or not to dissolve. If we do not dissolve, we will have overlapping objects like here. There's two overlapping objects. If we do dissolve, all our objects are created into one. And the information about which station, in our case, the polygon relates to is lost. So the price of dissolving is that it takes longer time and you lo use, lose your information about the origination, where does it originate from, which station. Well, if we do not dissolve, we get overlapping and that might just give some um, some extra little problems, but we'll see when we look at this in practice. So, we'll go back and I'll get rid of my uh, T's and polygons and my, um, and my raster allocation areas. So what I'm interested in is trying to see how many addresses are there in, let's say, one kilometer from each station. So, I will go back to my little toolbox and create a new model. And in this model, what I will do is that I will use my stations. Sorry, stations. And create a buffer around them. So I back up in my analysis tools and proximity and buffer. And put that in and say I would like to do a one kilometer buffer. I will leave this dissolve tool as none, so I will not do any form of dissolving on this data set here. So that means that my output polygons they will be overlapping, but they will contain information about what station do they belong to. So this is the result, and I'll just add this to the display and run my tool. So I now know here these are one kilometer around each station. And if I I tool here, it will give me a list a bit big for so a list of all my polygons. So in this case, now this, I'm only interested in these. So that was this one, and this one, and you can see that they know which station they relate to. So this location here is within one kilometer of both Velbu and uh, Ulholt and Peter Banks by and Langel as those three, four stations that it, it was within a kilometer from. So, if I want to uh, know which addresses belong to which stations, I could do this little trick that we've been doing before, and I could take this information here, and I could bring in my addresses, and I could do a intersect, so a overlay and a intersect of these, so that will find all of those. So that's my input, 
that's an input. The result of this intersect will be points, because the intersection of a point and a polygon is a point. And it will include attribute information from both my polygons and from my addresses. So I will now, for each address, see which station it's closest to. So, I run my tool. I just add this output thing here to my display and run my tool. The tool has now finished and we got our results over here. And what we can see is that if I start to uh, let's zoom in on uh, an area down here. So here we have some stations and we have our addresses. And um, each of our addresses, this is our um, station addresses, these the intersect ones, you can see they are only inside these buffers, the buffers are here. And uh, I can then ask with my eye tool on a layer, and the only layer I'm really interested in is in this trace um, yeah, buffer intersect. So I have that point there I had, I can move it a bit more, like that. So I had this, at this address here, yeah, and you can see it goes to this Technic station, where, um, whatever that is, and this goes to a um, which station name does it have? Uh, Via Slow Elite, and this one was Via Slow, and it goes to Dance Hall and Valby and probably also Langel, Langel, yeah. So we had, and what you should note is that this, if you look at the FID. Oh, let's see if we could find the station FID. This is the, the address uh, FID. So this one, this number here, is exactly the same for all of them. Or if you go and look at the attribute table here, if I sort them on my original address FID, you'll see that there are see if I can find some here. Um, this one at least has this, this is the same FID all of these all of these points are the same FID but they are oh, well, must be one that's um, referencing to different stations okay so this is, um, if I wanted to know how many stations are in uh, one kilometer of my, uh, sorry, one, how many addresses points are in one kilometer of my um, stations, well, I shouldn't believe that it was 130,000, because that's the, all of the combinations. If I wanted to know how many stations or addresses were in one kilometer, I would have to go in and take my buffer and change it, this intersect here, sorry, this um, dissolve, and do a dissolve and all, and then rerun my tool, and um, my uh, output now, says that there are 52,000, no, so, yeah, 52,468 stations. So, about half of what we had before. Or if you wish that most of our addresses could go to two stations in that. Um, so, this is the number of addresses that were within one kilometer of the station. If we have not dissolved, we will have the number of station address combinations and that will be a much higher number if they are overlapping as they are here. 
So, we have our buffer tool. <clears throat> that where the important thing is that if we want to maintain information about which, in our case, station the buffer was created around, we could have to not dissolve because then we could ask, okay, how many are within the distance of each station? If we want this time to know how many addresses are within one kilometer of a station, independent of which station, we would have to do the dissolve because otherwise we'll be covering counting some of the addresses more than once, namely all of those addresses that are within one kilometer of more than one station. So that was the buffer tool um, and how it's used in relation to, to distances. Um, it can do other interesting things such as making negative buffers on the inside of a, a polygon. So if you wanted to say you had a forest and you only wanted to have the core of the forest, you wanted to get rid of, let's say, the outer 50 meters because they are strongly influenced by the neighboring fields, whatever, then we can use a buffer to create our core in that way. So it is a very useful tool that we can do in many other situations. There's no real buffer in um, raster. The only thing we can do is that we could um, use our distance calculations from before. So if I go down and find my station distance that I did the calculation I did before and um, then go and do a use the same tool here or same model so I'll take my distance here so that's the distance to the station and I can then say okay I only want those where this is less than something so if I go down into my spatial analyst and go down into math and logical and say less than so less than or less than equal um, and then drag my in here and say that they have to be less than 1000 meters like that and add this to my display and run it I now should have if I go back to my here and get rid of all my station buffers and or have less than that's fine. Um, so if I make this one again, that's my station buffer transparent with a pink edge. We hopefully should see that this edge will correspond nicely to our buffer calculator or distance calculation with the wear. So I'll get rid of my model here. You see that this pink line is the divide between the grayish and the blue color where the blue is the true from this wear less than here. So I had a less than there. So all of the ones they are less than a kilometer away and all of the brownie beige color ones, they are more than one kilometer away. And of course, if you zoom in, we can see that there's a difference between, we can see the resolution of the 10 by 10 meters in our raster layer. So we can do something that is somewhat similar to the, the buffer in the raster by asking less than um, some distance but there will always be a dissolved we cannot have overlapping information um, in the raster system so that was accessibility we are typically interested in knowing how many um, 
addresses are moved in a distance of a park or a station or how many bookshops are within a distance of an address if you want to live so that you have at least three bookshops within a walking distance of where you live and accessibility is the type of distance you're interested in and in the vector version it's a buffer tool that we'll use and in the raster we'll be using a Euclidean distance combined with the lesson to find those locations.